Hello, I'm Sean Lambert, and today we're going to take a look at my current gameplay in OCS Crimea, Conquest of Crimea, and, um, well, we're not doing the liberation yet, but this is the conquest portion. This is what uh, mid-October, or actually almost the end of October looks like uh, in my game right now, and it's a little funky. Uh, I'm not I'm not a terribly experienced OCS player here. And uh, yeah, this is really, this is my first OCS game that I've owned. I played around with DAC a little bit, but DAC is a much different animal than the Eastern Front games. And um, uh, it doesn't have all of the pieces to it. So there's no extenders in DAC. You can get trace off of roads in DAC. And just in general, it's a much different game. But in this, um, things are much denser because obviously we're, as the Germans, trying to stuff our way down through this isthmus and into Crimea itself where things could open up for us and hopefully will relatively shortly. Uh, the Soviets have actually, uh, I made a, a couple blunders with them last turn. Uh, I made a couple low odds attacks lost the surprise roll and then lost the attack as well and ended up losing two cavalry uh, divisions entire divisions just wiped out trying to bash their heads into um, the the germans and the reason i made those attacks because i had the dg markers but even with the dg the these guys only have a um, an ar of three so even with the dg they somehow managed to lose the surprise roll which was incredible i think they they literally rolled once or something like that and um both times both times it was insane uh, and then they they also rolled like a two and a three <laughs> on their attacks so i mean it doesn't really matter which column you're shifted on uh <laughs> you're gonna lose uh i think they were on i think they were on like the two to one table and they rolled a three adjusted three both of them it was terrible <laughs> so um anyway they died um and that's why these spaces here are open Nor normally they would not have been and in general i'm i probably strategically have screwed up here as well because i decided to send a uh, rifle division uh over on the right hand side thinking that well maybe we should have something a little stronger over there in case the Germans decide to flank but the German flank I didn't realize how slow it would be because uh, you really have to move your railhead two hexes at a time all the way up and around here just to be able to attack and that's going to take for bloody ever so in retrospect, I should not have done that. And of course, the rains again open up. Um, much like uh, October in, in Crimea, it, it's raining here today. But what is really cool about OCS and Crimea in particular is just this um, the, the closeness of the scenario. I... I I really didn't think that it would be quite this difficult for the Germans to push um, and, and how good it would feel to see, see the line kind of pushing uh, turn after turn. I've never really played any World War I games or anything like that, but I imagine a game like Developer Krieg or, or something like that would feel kind of like this where you get a little bit of a push, even a hex makes a huge difference. So you're fighting actually over hexes which in a lot of Eastern Front games is pretty rare, where you're a lot of times the, the front, when it stagnates like this, it can't move at all. <laughs> like it's, it's just stuck, it's hard stuck. Uh, and then you gotta wait for things to open up again when you get like tanks or something in here. But this, this is just an infantry, artillery, and planes kind of game right now. There's, uh, there's no tanks involved, basically. Uh, so, which is really cool. I say that, but obviously you could see the the top unit of um, of that stack there for the Russians is a is a tank unit, a little 
tank brigade, but uh, for the most part, there's not a lot of tanks in the first scenario. Now, it's not true of the later scenarios um, where there's panzer divisions, but for this first scenario, it's it's definitely a, an infantry struggle and a lot of low AR infantry and a lot of artillery, a lot of artillery. You can see there's just an immense amount of artillery for the Russians. And then under that stack, there's some artillery for the Germans. And the 42nd Corps just came in um, kind of last turn and this turn, they were mixed up. Um, and I actually, I didn't, I screwed up and I didn't bring them on, or I didn't bring half of them on on the 19th. And so they're all coming on on the 22nd. So I got to decide where to move them. But overall, I think OCS and Crimea in particular is a really great game. Um, I, I wish I um, had a chance to play it in person with someone who kind of knows the ropes a little bit more. But I'm, I'm starting to feel like I am getting it. I can get through a turn, you know, without making hor horrible mistakes, I think. And learning about the supply in this area, this is kind of like the practice area for dealing with uh, the supply rules. Because right here, obviously, we've got the rail line. We just have to move. We had to move the railhead up, but all that was that was just a matter of waiting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of strategy to it. You know, you just push down the rail line, and then it's fine. And I think in in Eastern Front games, that does tend to be the strategy. Like in in War in the East, that I do try to push down rail rail lines if I can, because it makes things so much simpler, um, supply wise. But it's so tempting over here to, I mean, if I had a mobile unit, like a cavalry division or something, which I actually had to commit a cavalry division to the front, um, but I might pull the cavalry off this line, send them over there, and see what they can do. Because we do have a, a Russian cavalry here, but so far I've been, I've been holding them back, kind of waiting to see how the middle plays out if I need to rush someone back over. Because the good thing about the cavalry is if you stick them into uh, move mode, suddenly they they become very, very, um, very mobile. Because so this guy's got 12. Um, so you can see there, if, if I were to stick him into move mode, I could get him really far, all, almost all the way back to the line. Uh, basically, it's you know one per hex for the most part, except on this this big road here, it's a, a half per hex. So you can get them really far with 12 movement allowance. He can get almost all the way back to the line in a turn. So just by keeping him there, it he can threaten both to reinforce and to do something in the north. But if he were to go any further, then that would kind of take away the option to pull him back to the, the main line if he's needed. Uh, my concern is that once this front line opens up here, then it's going to have to be more thinly held and it won't hold out as long against the Schwerpunkt. But um, I don't know. I also, in order to get those DGs, I did have to use uh, a couple artillery shots and in OCS artillery is quite expensive plus two attacks so the the Russians are actually a little bit low on supply at the front I mean they get plenty per turn so and they have plenty they still have a bit down in Sevastopol that they they can send up they actually have some units that they can send up from Sevastopol too um, so it's not like they're lacking it, it's just it takes time to get into position. And what could happen is you could have a turn, and actually we're already, we're already dragging some supply up to the front there as well. So they're going to get a glut in next turn. But what could happen here, and this is one of the most interesting things about OCS, is that you roll initiative every turn. So what, what happened on this turn is the Russians went first, then the, the Germans got to go. What could happen next turn 
is the Germans could go first and get that double turn and and this would be actually the kind of the optimal time to get a double turn and the main reason is you get the 40, 42nd core coming down pretty all full strength and they can slam into this line basically take up one of these flank hexes and start just absolutely pushing down one of the flanks and because the the Russians stupidly gave up that hex uh, because of attacks it, it gives a much better starting position so I I kind of I'm kind of feeling like the the Germans right now are in a really interesting spot if they get the double turn if they don't get the double turn then uh, it'll probably stabilize again but if they do get a double turn at this point I think a breakthrough is maybe not probable but at least possible for the first time in the game anyway till next time see ya